Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to linearize a modeling toolkit model. Today we will use a model from uh, uh, the documentation of modeling toolkit standard library called DC motor with PI controller. We see part of the model here. We have a rotating inertia labeled J. We have an electrical circuit with a resistor and an inductor and we have a voltage source uh, that we can control called the U of T here. And I have prepared by copying the code from this tutorial into VS Code here. So we start by defining the system. Uh, we see we have the ground and the voltage source from the electrical side. We have a step uh, block for the reference to the controller and we define our controller using the blocks that uh, lim PI. So that's a limited PI controller from the standard library. Then we perform some connections here. So this is essentially just connecting all the components together like we see in this uh, diagram here. So I will execute that. Uh, and then we create our model. And then we can see the model has 55 equations and 90 variables in this case, 25 parameters. Um, after we have performed structural simplification of this, we see now, now we have a, a model with four equations and four states. So if we look at the states, we have one state for the integrator in the controller. We have one state for the current in the inductor. Uh, the inertia has a, a angular position. And then we have um, the velocity of the speed sensor is another state. We, the modeling toolkit chose to use the, the velocity of the speed sensor, but it might as well have used the velocity of the rotating inertia here. We can try to simulate this system first to see how it behaves. And to do that, I run the, these commands here. And this produces a figure where we see we have an initial step response with some slight overshoot here. Uh, the, the orange trace here is the reference and the blue trace is the, the output of the, uh, uh, the speed of the motor. And then after three seconds, we have a, a disturbance torque acting on the system. And we see since we have integral action in the controller, we are able to reject that disturbance. So the disturbance torque is, uh, is called load here. In this case, it's an external torque applied to the motor. So now we would like to linearize this model, uh, perhaps to perform some control analysis. And we can always linearize the model by uh, calling modeling toolkit linearize, uh, providing the input and the output we want to linearize uh, between. And in this case, I would like to linearize between the, the input to the feedback interconnection. So that would be the first input here is the, the reference. And we see that feedback.input1, it's itself a, a system and internally it has a state called U. And that's how modeling toolkit standard library models all causal blocks. So um, this is an instantiation of the uh, real input uh, system and real inputs always have a state u. So we say that we want to linearize between feedback input one dot u and then uh, the output we want that to be the velocity of the speed sensor. And once again that's also um, speed sensor dot w um, is uh, itself a system and the the internal variable we want to linearize uh, uh, have as the output in our linearization is called u. So if we try to execute this code, we see that we get an exception. Uh, the system is unbalanced. There are 24 uh, derivative variables, but there are 25 equations. And this is a slight inconvenience. The problem here is that uh, we have connected a reference already. So uh, when we linearize, uh, from the reference input, we, we get one equation too much. So we could uh, remove this equation and redefine the system. And then we should be able to linearize. And when we have called linearize, we get the matrices of a state space system back A, B, C, and D. This is perhaps a better way of looking at it. Here we have the A, B, C, and D matrices that we are used to from a state space system. All right, but that was a bit inconvenient that we had to uh, now redefine our model before we could actually linearize it in the way we wanted. 
But there is another way of linearizing models. And that way is called uh, using something called an analysis point. So when I create this connection here between the, the reference source, the output of the reference and the, the input of the feedback, I can give that connection a name. And in this case, I will give it the name R for, for reference. Uh, and that creates uh, something called an analysis point. We can look at how that uh, connection looks. It's an equation that contains an analysis point named R from uh, the reference output to the feedback input. And I will create a similar analysis points for uh, the output of the speed sensor and one for the output of the controller. And I will call them Y and uh, U. And if we had created our system using these analysis points, we can now say that we want to linearize between R and Y. And in this case, we will get the same uh, matrices out here as we did before. But it's significantly more convenient to just provide the, the names we created um, uh, for the signals we want to linearize between. Uh, so here you see I called SS uh, of matrices dot dot dot. Uh, to be able to do that, I need to load control systems base. And that provides the function SS and that takes, we can look, it takes matrices A, B, C and D. And if it's in discrete time, it also takes a sample time. So this uh, object matrices, it's a named tuple. It contains A, B, C and D. So when I call a matrices with this splatting notation here, I just pass in A, B, C and D as arguments to SS. And that gives me a state space object. If I would like something called a named state space object, I can load the control systems MTK, MTK for modeling toolkit. And then I can, instead of calling linearize here uh, and getting matrices and, and a simplified system out, I can create uh, call named SS instead and provide the analysis points. And the result of that, whoops, the result of that is something called a named state space. Once again, it has A, B, C, and D, but now it has uh, state names and input and output names that uh, we can refer to more easily. When we have such a, a linear model, a linearized from our modeling toolkit model, we can, for instance, uh, call a body plot on that. So this should actually be like that. We can call body plot. Here is a frequency vector. We pass in the linear system, and here we see a typical. It's a, the the linear system from reference to output looks like. A, a low pass filter and that's expected for a well-tuned controller in this case. We might also want uh, to compute something called a sensitivity function. So if we look at the modeling toolkit uh, documentation here, um, the sensitivity function is defined like this. If our plant or our process model, the system we're controlling is called P and our controller is called C, then the sensitivity function is defined as 1 over 1 plus PC. And that's a function that is usually of interest to the control engineer for analyzing robustness and, and uh, performance. And we can uh, derive that function in a particular point uh, by calling blocks.getSensitivity. So that's a function from Modeling Toolkit Standard Library. And we provide the point uh, where we want to compute the sensitivity in. And in this case, we compute it in the output. And that gives us once again a, a named tuple matrices. And we can uh, create a state space object out of that um, by calling the SS function. Here I also call the function min real uh, for minimal realization because um, the linearization might create a system with more states than required. And in this case, we see we have one column here in the A matrix that is all zeros. So this, this system is either not controllable or not uh, observable. And if we call min real, um, we reduce the order of the system to have a, a system that is both controllable and observable. So now I have a state space object called SO for sensitivity in the output. I can also uh, compute the complementary sensitivity function and by calling get comp sensitivity. And I have a state space object labeled TO for complementary sensitivity in the output. And I can plot the body plot for these two systems. And they look the way we would expect if we are control engineers. 
we have a small peak in the sensitivity function. Remember, we want to limit this peak if we want to have a robust system. And the complementary sensitivity function looks like a low pass filter. We can also, for instance, uh, plot the Nyquist plot if we want. And uh, when we plot the Nyquist plot, typically we plot that on the uh, loop transfer function. So without having closed uh, the loop uh, in our control system. And there is a function called blocks.getLoopTransfer in a particular point, uh, which we can call. And what that does is it's, uh, it's opening the closed loop in the, in the analysis point Y and computing a linearization uh, of the, the uh, transfer function that we have in the loop with the loop open. And here before I creating or after I have created the state space object, I append a minus sign. And that's because the, the closed loop in this case includes the uh, negative uh, sign in the negative feedback. But when we plot the loop transfer function, we usually do not include that negative sign. So here I, I multiply by negative one to, to get what we are used to. We can uh, compute, uh, uh, plot the Nyquist plot of the loop transfer function. And it looks perhaps the way we are used to. Here we see a circle that just is a tangent, tangential <laughs> to the uh, Nyquist plot. And that circle has radius uh, equal to the uh, h-infinity norm of the sensitivity function. So this might be something you remember from basic control theory. The, the peak of the sensitivity function magnitude here is 1.4. So I draw that circle uh, in the Nyquist plot using this command. All right, that was essentially it for this little tutorial. We have seen how we can build a modeling toolkit model. We can linearize that using the native interface. We can also add something called analysis points, which is like a named uh, connection. And then we can use the analysis point names to compute uh, linearizations of nonlinear models. We can also create uh, state space objects with names with this simple syntax if we load the control systems NTK package. We can uh, uh, plot body plots of our modeling toolkit models or the linearized versions of them. If we have loaded control systems base, we can compute sensitivity functions, loop transfer functions, plot Nyquist plots, and so on. And if you would be interested in slightly more advanced uh, linear analysis tools for um, modeling toolkit models, I encourage you to visit the uh, documentation of Julia Sim Control. So if you Google Julia Sim Control, you will probably find this documentation. And here we have an example, if you go to linear analysis and example modal analysis of a series of masses and springs. Uh, this example creates a system uh, where several different masses are connected with springs and dampers. And this is a common model of, for instance, a transmission, syst uh, transmission system in a car or uh, a building that is swaying in the wind. And this documentation, this example will demonstrate how we can uh, compute mode shapes and we can simulate the different modes and so on and we can also visualize the the mode shapes with the animations like this we also further go uh, go further in this example and, and design a, a controller for this uh, system up here that reduces vibrations using something called passivity based designs. So it designs a passive controller that is guaranteed to render the closed loop system stable. All right, thank you for today.